All right, so this video is about uh, thermodynamic processes. So pretty much thermodynamics is uh, the study of how heat flows in and out of a system and uh, how we can get actual physical work done from that. So far what we've been looking at has been on a pressure versus volume diagram. And uh, we looked at a cycle that did something like this we realized that uh, there are some circumstances where heat had to flow in or heat had to flow out just to, to make sure that the uh, temperature did what it was supposed to do or the pressure did what it was supposed to do or the volume did what it was supposed to do. So we're going to take a look at what those actual processes are. And the first one is uh, called an isobaric, isobaric process. And uh, the isobaric, uh, each one of these terms is going to have this ISO in front of it, or at least most of them are. So ISO means same, which means something doesn't change. And uh, you might realize that baric uh, kind of seems like the same thing as barometer or something like that, which measures pressure. So an isobaric process uh, means that we have the pressure remaining constant, constant pressure. And if we take a look at what that looks like on a PV diagram, or pressure versus volume diagram, we're keeping the same pressure, but we're changing the volume. So we could move from point A here to point B over here, and that would be an isobaric process. And it could actually go either way, right? It could go from A to B, and from A to B, that would be an expansion of, uh, of volume. Uh, so we would call it an iso baric expansion, but you could also have the exact same thing going from B to A, in which case that would be an isobaric compression. Either way though, we do know that we do actually have some work happening here because we saw in class that the work is the area underneath this graph, right? So the work was the negative pressure times the change in volume. And that gives you the work for an isobaric process. Okay, so the next one that we're going to look at is called isochoric or, um, there we go, or isovolumetric. Okay, isochoric or isovolumetric. So again, we've seen that iso, and that iso means same, right? The original one, isochoric, is how AP used to, to refer to this, but now they have this new one that they're liking to use more, and it's isovolumetric. So you can probably see from the secondary term that what we're talking about is same volume. Same volume. So in this one, we really don't have an isochoric or an iso, or excuse me, we don't have a... a compression or an expansion because we're saying that the volume remains the same. So on a PV diagram, pressure, volume, we're talking about having the same volume. So we can have uh, point A here and we could have point B up here, in which case you go from A to B or B to A. It doesn't necessarily matter which way you go unless you're uh, talking about a certain process, but we don't have any work done here. The work is exactly equal to zero because there's no area underneath that particular line. Now, if you were moving from A to B, seeing the same volume but having an uh, increase in pressure, then we know from uh, what is one Charles Law, I think it is, that pressure goes up, therefore temperature has to go up. So that means heat had to have flown, uh, flowed into the system here. If it's the other way around, pressure goes down, that means temperature had to have gone down, which means that we had to take heat out of the system. We had to remove energy from the system. Okay, so it's isochoric or isovolumetric. The next one is called isothermal. Isothermal. Uh, again, we're seeing the iso, which means same. You can probably figure out that thermal, uh, what that means. So this is what we're talking about is the same temperature. Okay, the same temperature, which means for a given... Uh, set of gas, so a sample of gas, then what we're talking about is that the same average kinetic energy of the gas. Okay, we have to keep the same temperature. 
well, this has got nothing to do with pressure, nothing to do with volume in terms of having to be the same. So that means pressure and volume can actually change. Well, if pressure and volume can change but temperature remains the same, then that means we're actually in a situation of Boyle's Law, PV equals PV, or P1, V1 equals P2, V2. And we saw in class that uh, when you, we plot that pressure versus volume for uh, Boyle's Law, then you end up getting this nice curve, this like inverse curve kind of thing, which makes sense according to this equation right here, that PV would equal a constant, or that pressure would be equal to that number over volume, which would give you an inverse graph like this. Uh, the weird thing about it is that every point on this graph, every point on the graph has the exact same temperature. Every point has the exact same temperature. But we can have a different graph. We could have another graph down here, and because that graph is lower, this would have to have a smaller temperature. So this one might be 200 degrees Kelvin, but the one up here might be 600 degrees Kelvin. And uh, the next one might be way up here, and that one could be 1,000 degrees Kelvin. So they're all inverse uh, curves here, but every point on that curve, so moving from point A to point C and going through point B, each one of these points all has the exact same temperature, but has a different pressure and volume. Now, work is done on a pressure versus volume graph for an ISO thermal situation, okay, but since we have an inverse curve here, you would need to know a little bit of calculus in order to figure out that. You could estimate it, you could, you know, make a rectangle and a triangle or something like that, but you'd need to know a little bit of calculus in order to actually find the work here. So if we're keeping the same temperature, but our pressure and volume are actually changing, if we're going from uh, point A up here, and we're going to point B down here, that means we've increased our volume, so that means we can have an expansion here again. So this is an isothermal expansion, uh, but pressure goes down, volume goes up, temperature remains constant. Now here's the, the kicker here. If temperature remains constant, pressure is going down, volume going, is going up, that means that we have to end up actually producing uh, or giving this, this system heat. So we have to increase the amount of heat going into the system for this compression, or excuse me, this expansion, in order to keep the temperature constant, in order to keep them, the molecules moving around with the same average kinetic energy. Okay, and the opposite would be true if we we're going back the other way. If we wanted to keep the same temperature, pressure's going up, volume's going down, then you end up with having to, to take heat out of the system. All right. And the last one is uh, doesn't follow the, the same naming conventions. It's called an adiabatic. Adiabatic. And again, we can have an adiabatic expansion, or we can have an adiabatic compression. Um, really can't pick out anything in the word that says what it's actually going to mean. So an adiabatic expansion or compression happens with absolutely no heat lost or gained. So we have the same uh, amount of heat, or a better way of putting it would be same amount of energy. So our Q, right, heat, didn't change. Uh, or we can say our change in Q is equal to zero. Now this does not mean that pressure remains constant, volume remains constant, or even temperature remains constant. If uh, something happens, like inside of the motors that we're taking apart, if, um, if the gas expands and it pushes on the piston, then the work is being done, uh, in which case uh, volume is going to increase, pressure might decrease, temperature might increase or decrease depending on what's going on, but we're doing it so quickly that uh, we're not allowing any heat to enter or exit from the system. So the way that this looks on a pressure versus volume diagram, because we're allowing temperature to change here, it actually works as if we were going between two different isothermal lines. So here is our first isothermal line that says, uh, maybe this one's at 600 degrees Kelvin. And then here is our second isothermal line. Okay, and these are inverse uh, ones that are always the same distance away from each other. So maybe this one is uh, 1,000 degrees Kelvin. Well, if we are looking to get from point A, which is at 1,000 degrees Kelvin, and go to point B, which is at 600 degrees Kelvin, then we're going to need a line that goes 
kind of curves downward like this, but it's a much steeper line than what we have for an isothermal line. So this right here from A to B would be an adiabatic expansion because we are actually going uh, further in volume or increasing volume. Again, you go from B to A and it could be an adiabatic compression, but all the while we have absolutely no heat going in or out of the system, which is why we end up with a temperature change from 1000 to 600 or vice versa. So these are the uh, four processes that we have for thermodynamics uh, that pretty much governs all processes that we have where work is being done and uh, any motors or engines that we have that run off of thermodynamics such as gasoline engines uh, all kind of boil down into these scenarios. So isobaric process which means uh, constant pressure. We have isothermal, uh, excuse me, isochoric was the next one or isovolumetric. Then we have isothermal and then last one we have adiabatic. And we will see how these actually relate to the motors we're taking apart as we get further in class. Don't forget to answer the questions below the video.